Now we all know that brakes are a super important part of any car, which is why I'm here at the Techstar test track to actually show you how to fit them properly. Let's go again. Now we all know that the brakes are an essential part of any car and fitting them can actually be quite a straightforward and simple procedure. But also we've all experienced a little bit of brake noise and judder even on newly fitted brakes. And it's all about doing it properly, making sure that the process is exactly right. Now first up, when you actually come to do your brakes, a simple check to make is actually the bearings, the condition of bearings, maybe even some of the suspension parts. Just wobble the wheel from top to bottom and also from side to side and then just spin it. Now, can hear a little bit of a drag from the pad on the disc, that's okay, but there's no kind of graunchy rumbling noises from the bearings. So our first check is okay, so now into the brakes. Now it's all about following best practice. Now the first thing you want to be doing, once you've got the wheel off and you can see the brakes, is have a really good look around to make sure there's nothing untoward. Things like, check that your flexi pipes there aren't frayed or perished or damaged in any way, there's no kind of rust or corrosion showing, and also all the associated wires for the sensors, for pretty much anything at all, because of course if you're working on a car, you want to make sure that everything is working well. Right, the first thing to do is just to pop out these little pins. Just hold the spring down just to get the pin out nice and smoothly. Look at that. Now there's quite a lot of meat on here. Right, so then to get the pads out, you should be able to pull them out finger tight, but if you actually just pull the pad, work it away against the pistons, there we go, that's that one out. And I'll just crack these off. Okay, and then just get a nice little hook, pop it onto the spring, and we can actually hang the caliper up safely out of the way. With that great big caliper out of the way, you can now get a much better view of the disc, and you'll see that this is actually slightly different to many older styles. For the last couple of years, a lot of the manufacturers have been moving over to this bi-metallic disc, so people like BMW, Volkswagen, Audi, and of course Mercedes. Now you can see, You've got these rivets that go around the outside. That's probably the first thing that's easy to notice. And in fact, what's going on here, you've got an iron rotor, but you've actually got an aluminium bell. And the idea of that really is just to reduce weight. And of course, what that means is the unsprung weight of the suspension is much less. And that means the response of the car is much better. So. Now Textile very kindly lent me their test vehicle so I can actually do the brake job but that explains why there's this rather non-standard heat sensor in position but also why the brakes are so clean already but as far as best practice goes what you need to do at this stage is clean down everything very thoroughly. Right, the next thing to do is just to make sure that all the mating surfaces are nice and clean. So you can use a wire brush. And of course, again, these parts are very, very new, very clean. So it's just to make sure everything's okay. Do the same on the caliper. Now also, while we're here, I'm actually sure the surfaces here where the pads actually run up and down also need to be cleaned again with the brush. making sure not to damage the seals, which we'll be checking in a second as well. And just make sure that the pads move freely. 
Then just do a nice visual check to make sure that the seals around the pistons are okay. Because of course if they're damaged, they can let dirt in and potentially fluid out. Right, now the last face we're going to be worrying about is the hub. And for that, I've got a very clever tool. So this aluminium bell, and on the front surface you can see this cleaning material, and that just goes on to standard windy gun, and off we go. And then if I just hold that, end up with a nice clean surface, which means the disc is going to go on nice and straight and parallel. Now when you open the box, there are a few things to notice. First of all, this is not a beer coaster or for propping up the table at the bar. This is actually a set of instructions and it's got some very useful information about actually measuring run out and also talking your wheel nuts up. So it's actually very important. You can use this as your coaster. Now also, the other thing you'll notice is straight away is the disc has got a special Geomet coating. And that means, of course, it's not covered in oil, which means you haven't got to clean it off. You can put it straight onto the car, which is great. Also, of course, that means this disc is going to look much nicer for much longer inside the wheel arch. So it doesn't matter how much weather you throw at it, it's not actually going to corrode for ages, which means it's going to look lovely and shiny. Another thing, of course, you can see here, you've got these dimples, little lines, grooves cut into the surface. And of course, that actually helps with wet braking. So if you're driving along, there's lots of rain and dirt and stuff lying around. This will actually help kind of clean the disc as you're driving along. And the last thing to notice here is a little screw. There's a replacement screw, so you should use this, not the one that came off the car. Now this little screw just holds the disc in position and this disc is built to at least the same specs as the OE. So in that same way, the cast iron that makes up the actual rotor of the disc that is made out of high carbon content cast iron, which is over 3.6%. And what that does is actually help reduce, what well, actually kind of increases the thermal conductivity, which then reduces the thermal distortion, which in turn reduces or minimizes any brake judder. And of course, also that carbon helps get rid of some of the sound as well. So it also reduces the screeching noise you sometimes get with brakes. Right, so our disc is now in position. So the next thing to check is the run out. So that's basically making sure that the disc is running true and not wobbling around. You generally have that kind of problem after a lot of heat distortion, but obviously, hopefully, because we've cleaned all our mating surfaces, we should have a nice, very tight job there. But the thing is, what to do is we need to actually bolt the disc onto the hub. So we're just going to use an old nut as a spacer. And this way, we can make sure that we get, once it's torqued up anyway, that actually we know for sure that the disc is attached to the hub correctly. Now, the interesting thing about the fact that we've got this aluminium hat here, of course, is it saves weight. And any weight you can save on a car is always gonna save you fuel and therefore emissions as well. So it's actually good for the environment, all this as well. So I'm just gonna attach this dial gauge to anything kind of solid, if you like, Ridge. And we're just gonna to have to run it along the very outer edge of the disc because of all the grooves and the slots and dimples. We just place it in position. Okay, so the idea is, I'm just gonna rotate the disc and watch the needle on the dial gauge. Now the tolerance we're looking for, anything less than seven hundredths of a millimeter. So basically 0.07 of a mil. And looking at this, I would say, looks like about three, so about three hundredths. So we're at least half is where we need to be within. So that's fantastic. So this run out is good. So now we can put on the caliper. Now, if the manufacturer recommends it, of course, you must put on your thread lock to be absolutely sure that you're doing everything correctly. Right. And as always, use the manufacturer's settings for the correct torque. Well, we're now nearly ready for the pads, but first I want to actually just open the caliper up, basically push the pistons apart. And in this case, of course, because we've got four pistons, what we need to do is actually do both of them at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to end up just pushing 
sort of two in and then two out and stuff and messing around. So make sure that you get them all the way open. Don't use the screwdriver or hammer or anything else like that. Use the right tool for the job. Okay, once that's in position, so we're now ready for the pads to go in. Now, obviously, you should never, ever use copper grease. That's a very, very bad mispractice. Basically, for one thing, the copper kind of the grease itself actually dries out, and of course, the copper particles can end up making things more sticky than good. But also, the dissimilar metals can be a problem. So you've got your aluminium caliper, you've got your steel disc. Obviously, having the copper in there as well is just going to add to the corrosion. Now, in this particular case, even though we've actually got a bonded shim going all the way around the outside of the pad to help with isolate the noise, Pop that in like so. And the same. So I'm just making sure that the pin retaining clip is nice and clean as well before it goes back in. Right, so the pads are now securely back in the calipers. So we're nearly done. The last thing you need to do, and you have to do this on each corner as you go, is basically give the brakes a bit of a squeeze to make sure that the fluid is put back into all of the pistons. And then that way, of course, it's not going to then spill out of the reservoir. And of course, if you're going to do one side of the brakes, you should always do the other side as well.